Hi, my name is Tyler Clarenbeek. I am a 3D artist, and on this channel, I'm going to be teaching how to use a 3D modeling program called ZBrush to create models of characters. So I figured we'd start out with a type of character I've modeled quite a few of, which are dinosaurs. For example, here's one of the first dinosaurs I ever modeled. It's called Acrocanthosaurus. It's slightly smaller than a T-Rex. Now, we're not going to be modeling in this first video something quite as complex looking as this. I'm not going to be showing how to model the entire thing since this is just a beginner to ZBrush video. We're just going to be modeling the head area and we're going to be modeling a different dinosaur than this. The dinosaur I want to show how to model is a dinosaur called Ceratosaurus and it's basically about half the size of this dinosaur but it's a meat-eating dinosaur as well. So to start out you will want some reference images and for dinosaurs I often use skeletal diagrams by an artist named Scott Hartman who has his own site and these are really good reference material to pull from these diagrams, he takes them directly from the fossils, he measures them and everything, and a lot of these diagrams he makes are used in scientific papers, so you can tell they're pretty accurate. So this is Ceratosaurus right here. I'll include a link right here to the image so you can download it. So as you can see, it's a meat-eating dinosaur, and it's got some nice horns on it for an interesting looking head. So with that, let's get started in ZBrush. When you first start up ZBrush, this thing called the Lightbox should be open by default. And there will be these pre-made projects, whatever. Some of them are just full miles and some of them are just starting ones, like these. And the one we want to use is the one called Default Dino Wax. So you will start out the scene with a sphere like this. To rotate the camera, you just click and drag with either mouse button. To pan the camera, hold ALT and click either mouse button and to zoom in, hold down control. And I'm going to edit some of the render settings right here just so I can see the model a little better. First it's using a material which basically affects how shiny or whatever the model is in the preview. I'm going to turn this to matte cap white, which is a uh, material that comes with ZBrush by default. I just like this one because it gives you really nice shadows so you can see the geometry of your model better. And then I'm going to make it colored white so you can see even more stand out the shadows and stuff. And then that's just done right here. And then finally there's a modifier that's on by default. If you click on render and render properties, there is this wax preview. I would turn that off just because it kind of gets in the way of seeing the shadows. And with that, we are ready to start. So, first, I want to load in some reference images. To do that, over here is the draw menu. Now, you might notice when you click on one of these menus. If you move your mouse like this, you might accidentally be opening other menus and stuff like that. However, you can anchor this to the side over here. There's this little icon right here. Just click that and it'll anchor it over here. Now we're going to open that reference image I showed you of the Ceratosaurus. So click on the left right down here, which is basically saying the images are on the left and the right side of the model. And we're going to click map 1 and import. And I'm going to navigate to where I have that saved. And there we have a reference image loaded. It's fine where it is, but I'm going to, since we're just doing the head, I'm just going to scale it up a little bit using the scale menu right here. 
and hand it over a little bit so it's more in the center and probably bring it up so it's more behind the sphere it can help if you turn off perspective if you're familiar in other 3d programs there's perspective and orthographic view where orthographic there is no perspective at all so stuff is just flattened out and that will help you just line stuff up so here is about as close as I can get doesn't let me go any farther than one but that's fine because we can just move the sphere now you might see that my sphere is transparent right now and yours might not be if that's the case your fill mode is probably at one Let's just move that up to three and then these two sliders right here will let you adjust the transparency of the sphere and how much the image shows through with that we should be ready to get started now the, when I was going in the light box you could have chosen one of these more normal types of models there's like just a default sphere and stuff but the one I chose was a sphere that was created using Dynamesh which is a really nice system in ZBrush which you can find in the tools panel under geometry and Dynamesh and you can see it's turned on. What Dynamesh does is it basically lets you model without having to worry at all about polygons which is really nice for really quick modeling. Later on you can take that model and just edit the polygons and just to show you how powerful this is I'm going to show you what it actually does. So I'm going to turn on the poly draw polyframe which shows all the polygons and I'm going to turn off the image for a, sec a second you can click on the floor and I'll turn that off now you can see there's all these polygons on here they're all roughly the same size and if I were to draw in some stuff you can see they're starting to stretch out and if I get to another brush which I'll cover in just a second see it's getting really stretched out it's pretty bad geometry however if I go hold down control click the mouse outside of the model in this blank space and drag you'll see it remade the geometry so all the polygons are the same size and there's not anything any stretching or anything like that and you just keep doing that over and over until you got your base model now you don't want to be doing this for the entire model, you just want to be doing it for your starting point. But it's a really powerful tool that I would highly recommend using. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo all that. And we're going to turn this back on. So first, I want to just get this sphere more in line with the head. So we're going to use the transpose tools right here click move and then click and drag on the model and hold shift so it just brings it out perfectly straight out now what this gizmo does it lets you move the model in different ways for example that's just moving that part of the model and this is moving it like that what you want to be clicking on is this middle one this will just move the entire model without editing it or anything and I'm just going to position it about right here and I'm going to use the scale transpose tool right here and with that one it reacts a little bit differently than the move in this case you want to grab one of the ends and just drag it down and I'm going to use the move again to just bring it about right there and that should be about where I want it and then just click draw to go back to the normal mode now in ZBrush it's a lot like working with clay there are a whole bunch of different brushes you can see there's a whole bunch most of these come with ZBrush by default there's a few down here at the bottom that you won't have but I'll teach you how to make two of these in the, later on in the video we're going to be using the move tool initially just to get the general shape of the head. So just 
find move click on it and you'll have it and right here you can see this circle that's your brush it determines how much of the model you're affecting and stuff and you can change the size of the brush either up here using this draw size or you can use the square bracket keys as a shortcut which I'm going to be using so if you're wondering how I'm changing the brush remember it's square brackets whenever you're modeling you don't want to just go starting in detailing you want to get general shape first then smaller shapes and finally details so I'm going to click on here and drag and as you can see it did it perfectly symmetrically that's because the default for the sphere that we loaded up will have it already set up as symmetrical if you want to turn off symmetry you can press X although for this case we want to keep symmetry on and I'm just going to roughly shape it to the head it's resizing the brush there so I can get a little bit more detailed I'm going to also include the neck and I'm just rotating around and I see I did something some bad stuff right there I'm going to press Control Z to undo just to redo that since I didn't want that groove on the bottom of his neck and that looks a little better and just do the same thing for his jaw and just checking to make sure it's roughly good and I'm not going to worry about the horns just yet because they're a smaller detail so with that, if I turn on my polyframe and I turn off the background, you'll see there's all these stretch out polygons. And just like I said before, with Diamesh turned on, you can hold down control, drag, and it's all fixed up. And then I'm going to turn the image back on and turn off that. Now I'm going to go back up to the menu right now and I'm going to turn down the opacity of the image just so I can see the model a little better and I'm just going to start doing some more minute adjustments and I'm having trouble seeing the model so I'm going to turn both of those all the way up just so I can see the outline of the model now you don't want to be following this muscle right here just yet I would suggest just following the skull and here I'm getting the jaw and it keeps rotating on me because I keep missing clicking on the mile back of the head snout the neck and there we should have a good side view 